The deep web is one of the most amazing things on earth. Not because of how joyful it makes people or anything, but because it is a completely uncensored view of people. You can speak your mind, buy what you want, do anything you want, when on the deep web. You have complete and total freedom. I had always been fascinated by the deep web, and at the time the events in the story occurred, I was in college. Lots of people on my campus had really been getting into accessing the deep web. It was almost like a trend. With so many people getting on it, it seemed perfectly safe for me to try. Now, I had always heard of the deep web horror stories, stories of hacking, stumbling on disgusting sites, and people even somehow finding your address. These stories were mainly what kept me off the deep web, but with most of the people in my college using it on a normal basis, I decided to give it a go. I asked my friend to come over and help me set it up. When my friend arrived, we opened up my laptop and began to set everything up. He told me that we were using Tor, a program that lets you access the deep web. He also asked me if I was planning on doing anything illegal, to which I replied no. He said that since I wasn't, we didn't need to install Tails, which is apparently a software that makes it more secure if you plan on doing illegal things. A little while later, everything was set up. I had my new IP address and my friend gave me a brief rundown of what to do and what not to do. He made it very clear that when I was using the hidden wiki, that I kept it on censored mode so that it would be less likely for me to see something that I didn't want to see. After about two weeks of using the deep web, I felt like a pro. I had access to many different sites, spoke with some great people, made friends, even bought some weed. I had become cocky and was ready to dig deeper into the dark web. I turned off the censored mode on the hidden wiki and began to browse the links. It took a while, mostly because Tor is a bit slow and many of the links just led to dead web pages. Eventually I stumbled onto a site called All The Gore. It was a big chat room with many different topics. I had a fairly strong stomach. I had seen many violent movies and had seen beheadings, killings, etc. through the normal internet. After looking at a few different chat rooms, I noticed how sick this site really was. The people in these chat rooms were actual killers, bragging about some of the things they had done. In the chat room, you could also post pictures. One man by the name of Culture045 had the stage in one of the chat rooms. He was explaining in detail how he had broken into someone's house, kidnapped a little girl and brutally killed her parents by hiding under their bed and then opening their throats. He then explained how he brought the little girl back to his house, raped her, beat her, and cut her up. I didn't think he was telling the truth at first, but then he posted pictures. These were the most horrifying pictures I had ever seen close-ups of the poor 8-10 to 10 year old girl being brutally raped, beaten, and cut with a knife. Culture kept posting pictures. The new ones were of the girl tied to a chair, bleeding, crying, throwing up, etc. Then he showed a picture of him with a drill, drilling into her skull. The most haunting part is that while he was doing it, he was looking at the camera with sheer joy in his face. I had seen enough and typed in the chat room window, You people are sick and you deserve to die. How can you sleep at night? Immediately people began making fun of me saying that I was just as helpless and ignorant as the little girl in the pictures and that I should get off the big boy part of the internet. They began saying I was a pussy and called me an empath when culture typed something in the chat box. He said, Really? Where do you live buddy? I'm sure everyone would love to see you on this site. I then made the biggest mistake of my entire life and typed, I'm calling the police and having the site shut down. Less than a minute later, everything on the site went black and the new chat box appeared in green. In it, someone named Admin1 typed in the box. He said, call the cops and you will regret it. I didn't type anything in the box and reached for my cell phone. What happened next haunts me to this day. My phone said I had a new message. I opened it and it said, call the police and you're dead. 
There was no number. It didn't even say oh no number, it was just blank. I looked back at my laptop and saw my webcam light turn on. I quickly covered it, but I saw on my screen a picture of me looking at my phone. I got wide-eyed and froze for a moment when the admin typed again. Put the phone down right now and uncover your webcam. I put the phone down but kept the webcam covered when he typed again. Okay then, be like that. Right after, he posted my full name, age, and address in the chat box and typed, It would be a shame if you and your college buddies went missing, wouldn't it? I then did as he said and uncovered my webcam. He then told me to follow his instructions on how to make sure it is impossible for me to reach the site again. I followed each and every one. When I finished, I got a text that said, Now don't ever try and come back. Just like before, it had no number. I still called the police from my friend's phone, but they were never able to find the site. If you ever go on the deep web, don't ever just mindlessly explore, especially if you don't have additional software to keep you more secure. I was a stupid college kid, and I just hope nobody makes the same mistakes I did. I moved to a different home and changed all my information, but I still get nightmares to this day.